Hi, Algebra students. Today we're working on Unit 3, Lesson D, and this is Part 1 of a two-part series where we're going to apply many of the laws of exponents you've already learned. So our objective is I can simplify an expression using multiple laws of exponents. The problems get a little difficult in this section, so you may anticipate watching these videos a couple of times. Um, before we start applying, let's review our rules very quickly. The product rule, when we're multiplying two terms together, we add the exponents. The quotient rule, when we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. If we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. Zero exponent rule, anything raised to the zero power equals one. And the negative exponent rule means anything raised to a negative power gets relocated. Okay, looking at example one, number one. I have a product, and what I do is regroup my terms, so I put like terms together. So I'm going to rewrite 3x squared times 5x to the fourth as 3 times 5 times x squared times x to the fourth. If you haven't done any math yet, have not applied the rules yet, I'm just rewriting it so it's a little bit easier to understand. 3 times 5 gives us 15. I'm multiplying these two x's together, so I add those exponents, and I'll get 2 plus 4, which will give me 6. Okay, that one's not too bad. Now, number 2 looks different, but they're actually asking us to do the same thing. Parentheses imply multiplication, and since I have this negative term in there, that's probably why they use the parentheses, so I don't get confused and want to subtract these two terms. So I'm going to approach it the same way we approached number 1, where I'm going to regroup. I'm going to put 3 next to negative 5, again using the parentheses so I don't get confused. And then I'm going to put my a squared term next to my a to the sixth term. Again, all these terms are being multiplied together. 3 times a negative 5 will give us negative 15. And an a to the second times a to the sixth, we're adding those exponents, we're going to get a to the eighth. Final answer, negative 15 a to the eighth. Now looking at number 3, I have 6 to the 0 times 4 squared. Okay, I don't really have any regrouping to do here because they're, they're both numbers. Thinking back, I remember that 6 to the 0, anything to the 0, equals 1, and 4 squared will just be 4 squared. Now remember, 4 raised to the second power is 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. 4 times 4 will give us 16. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Skip those U tries and head down to example number two, number seven. Now these problems are a little bit different. Sure, we still have two terms we're multiplying together, but one of these terms has an extra exponent attached to it. Order of operations, as you'll remember, tells you you must take care of your exponents before you do multiplication. So I'm gonna go ahead bring my 3x to the third term down, and then do a quick rewrite applying this 3 to both terms inside my parentheses. So this will be times 4 to the third times x squared raised to the third. Now before I start multiplying, I'm going to evaluate or apply that exponent. So I'm just going to do a quick rewrite again, 3x to the third. 4 to the third power is going to give you 64 and you have x squared raised to the third, and when you have exponents, a power raised to a power, you multiply them. So you'll get x to the sixth. Then I'll do a quick regrouping, so I'll put three and 64 next to each other, x to the third by x to the sixth. Final answer, three times 64 will give you 192. And now that I'm multiplying these terms together, I add those exponents, and I'll get x to the ninth. You might want to pause the video, do a quick rewind, make sure that you completely understand this process. Okay, number eight, same sort of idea. I have two terms I'm multiplying together, but one of them has an extra exponent. Like I explained to my students, this exponent attacks every single term that's inside your parentheses. So I do a quick rewrite with that first, raising 6 to the 2nd power and x to the 5th 
to the second power. And then I bring down my x squared and ignore it for right now, but I don't want to forget about it. 6 squared again is 6 times 6, so you get 36. x to the 5th squared, multiply those exponents, you'll get x to the 10th, times x squared. We're almost done. 36 will stay 36. Uh, again, we're multiplying these terms together. We add the exponents, x to the 12th. Circle your answer. Okay, page 2. Example number three, number 11. What they want to check for here is to see if you really understand these rules and you can apply them. Number 11, when you're multiplying two terms together, you typically add the exponents and come up with a solution. In this instance, they gave us the solution. We just have to figure out the missing variable. So this one's not too bad. Four plus some missing value equals five. Our missing value here, obviously, would be 1. Okay, number 12. We have a power to a power. When we have a power to a power, remember, we multiply those exponents together. So 8 times some random number equals 16. To find our random number, we do 16 divided by 8, and we'll get that our answer should be 2. Number 13. Oh boy, we have two terms in here, but only the z is raised to the blank power. 2 raised to the third power would give us 8. That's already been addressed, so we don't have to worry about that. But z to the blank power raised to the third power is somehow going to equal 15. So our quick equation would be some blank missing number times 3 equals 15 missing number, therefore, would be 15 divided by 3. Answer would be 5. Okay, down below, number, for example, number 4. They're going to throw a few more things at us. Hopefully it won't get too bad. All right, number 17, negative exponents. Okay, I think what we want to do with this one first is take care of that negative exponent. So then we'll know what we're really dealing with. So if we do 2 over x squared times x squared, it becomes a pretty simple problem. x squared over x squared, those will cancel. Your final answer will be 2. If we would have approached this problem a little bit differently and done 2 x to the negative 2 times x squared, and we add those exponents, We'll get 2 times x to the 0, which is 2 times 1. We'll still get an answer of 2. With these problems, it's very important to note, you can approach them from several different ways. Some will be easier than others, and it's really hard to always know what's the best approach when you're first looking at a problem. So scope it out. Th take a few things into consideration. Okay, number 18. Let's do a quick rewrite. 3x to the negative 3, y to the negative 4, 6x to the negative 2, y to the 3rd. Yeah, let's start grouping stuff together, and then we'll look and we'll see what we have. So we'll put our 3 with our 6. We'll put our x to the negative 3 with our x to the negative 2. And then let's group y to the negative 4 times y to the 3rd. Okay. Now, I've warned my students, be real careful when you're writing terms like this, because if you make your exponents too big, it'll probably be misinterpreted for a regular number. Same here, if that 6 gets too small, I might think this is 3 to the 6th power versus 3 times 6. So neatness is key with this. 3 times 6 is going to give us 18. I'm multiplying these two x's together, so I'm going to add those exponents and get, let's see, negative 5. Again, my y terms, I'm going to add these exponents together again, and I'll get y to the negative 1. Now there's a rule that says you cannot have negative exponents in your final answer. So since these are really considered part of the numerator, I'm going to move them to the denominator. However, the 18 is going to remain in the numerator. So we're going to bring down x to the fifth, make it positive, 
and you can either write y to the first power or just leave it y. It means the same thing. Okay, final problem for the day, and it's a little challenging, I'm not going to lie. Number 19. 3x to the fourth, y to the sixth, all raised to the third power, times 7x to the third, y to the negative fifth. Okay, there's a lot going on here. We've already talked about addressing this exponent first before we do multiplication. So I'm going to do a quick rewrite so I know what I'm doing with, doing with it. 3 to the third, x to the fourth to the third, and y to the sixth to the third. And then I don't want to forget about my 7, x to the third, y to the negative fifth term, so I'm just going to kind of put it on the side for now. Evaluating 3 to the third, I will get 27. Raising a power to a power, when I multiply these exponents together, I will get x to the twelfth, and raising 6 to the, or I should say y to the 6 to the 3rd, and multiplying these two exponents together, we'll get y to the 18th. And then bringing in the 7, x to the 3rd, y to the negative 5th. Okay, regroup them. 27 times 7, get those x's together, x to the 12th, times x to the 3rd, and put those y terms together. You get y to the 18th, times y to the negative 5th. Okay, 27 times 7. Go ahead and grab your calculators real quick. You, know, you can do some math in the margin. You should come out with 189. Multiplying your x's together, you're going to add those exponents. 12 plus 3 will give you 15. And finally, your y to the 18th times y to the negative 5 turns into a subtraction problem of sorts then, and you should get 18 minus 5 will give you 13. Definitely one of the more difficult problems out there. You may want to watch the video once or twice, or maybe try this again on your own. Um, but see how important it is to keep your work neat and organized. We'll go over the rest of these problems tomorrow in class. Again, um, thank you, and we'll see you then.